Jeremy Edwards is a singer and songwriter from Thoreau in New South Wales who has performed with his band Dust Radio as well as releasing music under his own name. Ghost is his latest album and it is a collection of songs that are poignant, sometimes bittersweet and ultimately hopeful. And I'd like to talk to him about it. Hello, Jeremy. Hey, how are you doing? I was just listening to that and I was thinking, okay, explain hopeful with those songs. Explain a bit of sweet. All right, I'm, I'm, I've got it. In, yeah, no, I'm no, not. I will. I will lead you to the questions. You don't have to explain <laughs> anything that I don't ask you about. But I am going to start not by talking about the album. Um, I was hmm. reading a quote that you were described by Grammy Award-winning producer Eric J. Dubovsky as the thinking man's Keith Richards. <laughs> so, of course, I need to know what prompted him to say it. If, if. If ever I meet Keith Richards, he's going to punch me in the face, isn't he? Because it was like the thinking man's Keith, Keith Richards is like, is Keith not thinking? I mean, what, like, you know, hello. Um, I, I'm a bit nervous about that. Um, Eric uh, Eric is a Grammy Award winning producer, American guy living in Australia. And uh, he, um, I worked with him on a project with Carice Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who won The Voice about 10 years ago, I think. And she's back playing live and she's phenomenal, yep. She's back playing live. Um, and uh, Eric Eric called me. I didn't know Eric prior to that um, or have much to do with uh, uh, The Voice. Uh, I, I, had, I knew a lot of musicians who had been involved with that or been the bands and stuff like that but I didn't I wasn't really moving in that sort of circle and um uh I got this call and and it was one of those classic like the beer ad where they sort of you know have the muffled response like when the when the wife is calling and and uh it's like I'm I'm just I'm still at the office sort of thing I had this call from this from this American guy and he's like hey uh Jeremy uh uh, someone's put me onto you and uh, I've heard that you're the thinking man's Keith Richards and I'd really like you to do <laughs> and the phones <laughs> and uh, I can, uh, you know, uh, the pay's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And if you could just, <laughs> right. and I couldn't hear anything about the details about who it was, what I had to do, anything like that. And uh, and that was the voice message, and yeah. uh, I, I didn't get it for a couple of hours, which is a long time in um, celebrity voice land, I guess. They'll just go right. and move on to, to somebody else. And I uh, called Eric back, and we started just talking about music and Tom Petty and all the things that he was into, and, and he started uh, speaking about uh, that he was – the producer for Carice's uh, new album and she was getting back on the road and wanted to, to to put a band together or at least do a new record and they had a lot of songs and stuff like that and what are you doing tomorrow morning? Uh, I need you here at 8 o'clock uh, wow. at Albert's and it was a, sort of like a drop everything call mm -hmm. and it developed a really lovely friendship with, with Eric and I didn't really know... Um, all of the stuff about him and he's you know he's gone in in Australia to sort of work with um Flume and all and um all these amazing artists and then you know he's got sort of Grammys on the shelf and stuff like that but he's living over here right. and uh and we're just really connected with music and the band that that uh ended up being Carissa's live band and band for that album was a bunch of guys that I grew up with playing sort of roots music and soul music in Sydney these right. these um fabulous players and we were just we just hit it with the with these songs um and through Eric and Carice and it was yeah fabulous couple of years there where I ended up writing and touring with Carice and um and having this great record and experience with with Eric so that's so, that that's that that's the quote in a in a long that's a long yeah. <laughs> no, just thinking, you know, as you said, the drop everything phone call, be here tomorrow at 8 a.m. turns into two years. Have you had many experiences like that as a musician? <laughs> uh only I well, I guess from Kevin Bennett, you know, it's like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, like and years later you're in the band, sort of thing. But that that was particularly uh that was 
that was really one of those things and it was just so funny because it was I, I did I couldn't hear what he was talking about or what he was offering or you know he's talking about money and then I couldn't hear that either and he's talking about how many days it's going to be in the studio I was like you just got to get call back quick and get into it um so I don't see him very much, but we're we're kind of online friends, and you know everything that I release or he's doing, you know, uh, it's a little different. Uh, me releasing my album and he's winning Grammys. I mean, uh, some of some of that golden that golden touch is rubbing off on me one of these days from Eric. Well, that's a, look. That is an excellent segue, Jeremy, to talking about ghosts because there is a lot of gold on this album. Um, and uh, I was reading it that it's a, basically a product of the pandemic because you used that time to write uh, in 2021 with your 2022. I think was mm. that a conscious decision to try to make the most of that time, or was it just what happened because you had the time? It was just what happened because I'd I'd been writing. Um, really consistently uh well for many years but in particular like the last five or six years has been really prolific for me as a songwriter um and uh that's also to do with the people that uh, I'm sort of associated with now I guess and and their output and how good that output is and um playing with those guys and and we're sort of bonded together um by by some tragedy and some great creativity and stuff like that so it wasn't just COVID uh I guess COVID gave me the opportunity to just kind of go okay now lots of creative people are are um are creating some really good stuff and digging into what they're, they're meant to be good at um, mm -hmm. during this time. And some of them are getting money from the government and your tax dollars are going into that. You should be good at what you're doing. Right. If, if you're sort of saying you're a songwriter or saying you're a musician or saying you're a writer and whatever, like you, you know, um, it's unfortunate if you hit a blank spot or a writer's block time during that, but uh, yeah. that's, that's a pretty privileged position to be in where you, you could be getting um money or even the time and the space as a creative person to 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 have that and, and lock down and write and mm -hmm. but it came on the back of, of quite a few years of, of quite a lot of songwriting and prolific um songwriting uh so I was kind of in the flow I guess yeah so the prolific songwriting was there a moment where the tap turned on so to speak, like something happened and you just thought, or perhaps it was that you weren't playing for someone else, like playing for Carice. It was actually that you had the space to, to make your own work. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, by by that period, um, you know, the stuff with Carice was long gone. But even during that period, when I think about it, I was just, when, when that opportunity came up um, with her to do that, I was just writing just nonstop doing demos for, for her and Universal and, I just go into the space and it was like full on sort of rock uh, stuff and rock, you know, pop sort of music. You know, I grew up with, you know, my, my, my background's pretty eclectic, I guess, with that sort of stuff. But when, once that writing tap really turns on and you get on that sort of flow, it can just go into many, many different areas. Um, and so, um, yeah, during COVID was was maybe where I sort of thought I really actually have to uh, put out a new record. It had been 10 years since I'd done a, a solo record or a record with my band. I'd been recording with other people and put out records with different thing, uh, different acts um, or as a songwriter or a partner in those acts. But as I guess as me as the centre of it, um, uh really that that gave me the chance to go okay you know you've you've got all these things to say you can reach out to people during this time and the co-writes that that I had with um some some dear friends and it was tied up with the the the, the grief of losing Glenn Hanna who was a, a dear friend and and so a lot of these things just started sort of crossing over and uh, and then meeting the the right producer too. Like Glenn was actually going to, I had asked Glenn to produce my mm -hmm. my uh, record, 
and he tried to talk me out of it and he was you know trying to get me to go further up the chain or what he thought was the chain and like oh we got to use this guy and that no no don't you you know but we had this fabulous musical connection and and i love the sounds and the aesthetic that he was doing when he was producing and recording records that, that glenn hannah was doing and and i and we started working on the 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 tesco west stuff which is a rock record that i was making with him and and then he was gone um and uh that's where i came across josh schuberth who's a producer for for ghosts and uh um, a fabulous producer multi-instrumentalist and um you know drummer for the stars um you know he, he plays on a lot of um records that you'd hear so many uh within australian music uh scene and uh and there's something about the way that josh played percussion on the records that i would hear with glenn and felicity right. and um and with shane nicholson and with matt fell where he'd be playing percussion then playing drums where i was just like that guy is just that guy is the shit <laughs> that guy is the he's killer and i have to work with this guy so that that sort of tweaked my ear um a long time before right. but i didn't really know that josh was like a producer in his own right and i didn't know his stuff and I, like he didn't know me either mm -hmm. and and so there was something there and i just thought i oh, i need to hook up with this guy and i i sent him some music and said i was kind of ready and I'd been tracking some stuff at home mm -hmm. uh, during COVID and doing guitars and and vocals and doing, I guess, demos. But some of those things ended up being on the record because they just captured right. a moment and sent them to Josh. And he just really loved the stuff. And the first day that we worked together, we did Boy, the first single off the record, and we did the entire thing in the first day and that was our test day to see whether we liked each other or we were going to kill each other and it was just the most wonderful experience and and that stayed all the way through the record well it's a wonderful opening to the album as well but i just wanted to to stay with glenn hannah for the moment as a subject actually because so glenn was married to Lisa the Urquhart. uh his loss has reverberated throughout the australian country music community in particular and i imagine for you as a as a collaborator with him it's not just the loss of a friend it is the loss of music that you might have made together and that's a that's a particular kind of grief i would think absolutely um i'm sort of but often hear myself saying that 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 Glenn was he sort of rocketed into my life, and we had all this incredible creativity and and plans and dreams and all this sort of stuff that you know where it was it's a bit of a, a laugh you know but he he I was riding with I think Lynn Botel up at Felicity and and Glenn's place and we you know and started to write with a lot of those guys and we're getting together and um glenn came in we played together maybe once or twice before and he just sort of was standing there watching us write and you know this sort of stuff and he's nodding his head in in, in the kitchen he just went i've got an idea we need to get a rock band together and you know, it's like the dumbest idea ever <laughs> for a bunch of middle-aged guys it was like I've done that before you know <laughs> I didn't end up being a rock star so I'm leaving that yeah. over there. and uh he was like it's going to be great it's going to be like this it's going to be like brothers land landreth and it's going to be southern stuff and it's going to be black crows and all the things that I know you can do and then you're going to front it and you're going to be poncing around doing that and I'll just play guitar we'll do this amazing guitar stuff but you're singing it and you're writing and you're going to be out the front and I was you know so he just had this <laughs> idea of this rock band and you know we just we took it on and uh he talked me into it of course and uh and he had a really strong idea about what he wanted to do with that I was like I don't want anything to do with the country music scene because he just sort of burnt out and that's part of the stuff that that we you know learned about what was happening with him later on um and it's just completely 
burnt out by it and didn't want anything to do with it and it's going to be like full-on brothers guitar it's going to be blokes you know so he didn't want to do any of that sort of stuff anymore it sounds silly but that was his idea and it was going to be matt feld steve fernley you and me and we're going to do this and we're going to pitch it as the guitar thing you know like this is a, like a full-on guitar band and we went out for dinner all of us and sort of decided and kind of wrote this like <laughs> contract together it's like we're going to do it and i just went away and wrote six seven songs in a week wow okay just my head just exploded with what we had talked about and that's the lovely thing about if you're on on message on track with writing that people can as a, what i was talking about with carice before is like you can you can just go into these spaces you know it's like writing or you know anything like that you know as a you know someone who's working in film you just go in there if you let yourself there and you're in that flow and you've you've got Mm. your mojo going and there it is you know and that's what happened with that band uh and then he was gone uh you know within that year uh and I'd written all this stuff and we had all these dreams and he was going to do all the sort of, you know, the back end stuff and had all the contacts with all the big guys and all that sort of stuff. And I'd agreed to ponce around and, you know, front the band and all that sort of stuff and, uh, and write the songs and um, uh, yeah. And, and then he was gone. So, uh, but uh yeah, as I said, he sort of rocketed in like that with the big dreams and all this sort of stuff. And it was something quite random, you know, and what I was doing and what he was doing, what everyone was doing, because we got involved, you know, got Lynn involved and Lynn Botel and and Fliss and and Kevin Bennett uh, and but doing rock. And so it was like this stuff that people hadn't heard that all these guys can do, you know, yeah. and, of course, you know. KB, Kevin can sing rock and roll uh, and letting Lenny and Fliss loose on some of these big sort of Southern rock, Black Crows type tracks was just, it was an incredible experience. And and then he was gone. And so he rocketed out that way and he left me with whatever was left. And what was left was grief, Mm. chances, opportunities, dreams and bands that i've ended up being in so Mm. ended up playing with the flood and being the guy and he always said to you know he started to get me to fill in for him when he was doing other things and stuff like that so he knew my connection with kevin through roots music and 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 blues and i guess that sort of stuff was a bit deeper and so he'd get me to do that and then you know my my relationship with shane nicholson as well was uh sort of it was a, a beautiful connection through that time and we we just uh, had a real kindred spirit um and and still do and um and so i ended up playing with with shane as well and so again it's like this ironic sort of grief and beautiful gift that I'm not much into the woo-woo sort of stuff, but I feel like that that's what Glenn was in my life. He's like, this is going to be me in your life is these gifts. Right. Let's go. The band, the idea, these beautiful bands, and I'm gone. There you go. I mean, right. that's how I kind of process that 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 grief, I guess, you know. Well, you said he left you with grief, chances, opportunities, and dreams, and I actually think that's another way to describe ghosts. The album, mm. but also Ghost the Song is something you wrote for Felicity after um, Glenn died. So his influence is in this album in some ways because Felicity sings on a different song um, mm. than the album on that one, but Shane singing with you on, or Shane the Peas on Ghost. So, um, but the album all together is, is a solo album and you obviously are happy writing on your own, but it is rich with collaborations. So I wonder if working with Glenn made you a different sort of collaborator whether you started to see collaboration in a different way or work in a different way than you had before yeah that's that's um that's very astute to pick that up i mean he he uh he certainly opened up this this part or the, this area that I, i'd already been writing with people and writing for people and stuff like that but at that time 
there's some sort of sim symbiotic thing going on with with me with writing and being open to it and then him um yeah bringing that as well uh and and i've had that in in my life prior as well like a connection with people through grief that can be the the positive out of something that you feel like at the time is going to just destroy you and out of that you know without getting too <laughs> deeply into it the human spirit is that 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 humans go on otherwise there'd be no one left right because yeah. this this stuff is going on all the time different types of grief and tragedy and stuff like that and people are resilient humans are resilient they they somehow rebuild and do stuff in the way that i rebuilt through that with those people because my family didn't know glenn as well and stuff like that. so my musical family i had to go in into that and through that became this open and very collaborative sort of part um through there where it was like would uh, uh let's let's just do this and let's be open and, and we had a lot to say all of us had a lot to say and we still do you know and it's not just writing about that every every day and literal sort of thing but it just comes back in these different ways and i guess the the song ghosts and then the sort of framework of the album that i didn't re even really know was happening then at that at that time was it was about the collaboration between these friends and that's why there's so many of them on the album it's not some great scheme or great plan that i had to have all of these fabulous um people on there it's just that those 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 people um we went through that together in those years and at the same time i was writing at, and and so all of those things just were crashing together and for those guys they're open to to being part of that because they're going through the same thing yeah and that's a way of kind of dealing with it as opposed to you know hanging out and crying or drinking or or uh, sitting around and talking and stuff like that was actually creating because that's that that positive part that then comes from that and that's how you 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 get through it and it brings up all these emotions but you're also getting something really positive and creative as well and that's mm -hmm. what those people do that i guess that's what creative people do you've got to have that outlet and that was the outlet the album became the outlet yeah it's i think it is what they do but it also requires conscious a conscious decision to, to keep it up because it's uh, it's probably the harder path actually because it requires a certain type of energy to keep creating even if you're getting a positive outcome the path of least resistance is actually the drink <laughs> <you're all> <laughs> absolutely um but when when you're starting to see the the fruits of your labor you know like all that that you know you're starting to hear back stuff and it start and it's meaning something to you maybe on a on a deeper for this record like a deeper level as well when you're writing about things and you're talking about ghosts the song that it started out that just came from from me trying to figure out how to uh how how to deal with uh my feelings about uh, about glenn being um close to him and a year or a couple of years later that that uh felicity had met somebody else and so she's discovering new love and that had happened in in my life in other parts in family where i'd seen grief and then a new life through falling in love uh and i'd seen that before and and it was sort of like a revelation you know as well and uh, uh when when that was happening as well it's like this is there there's something here and that's that human spirit i know it's sounding a bit woo woo and armchair psychologist but that's yeah, that's truly what i believe about that is that like um that people can rebuild and even when you're right right down there there is a chance it doesn't happen to everybody there is a chance and so that's what ghosts was about and and that song was sort of like a a way of me to deal with kind of a friend of mine falling in love with somebody else but 
I'd lost, um, I, I'd I'd lost somebody at the same time, and so would she. But she was moving on; she had to move on with it with her life. And so, how do you deal with those ghosts? They're not they're not always bad and always good, uh, but they're there, and they just come in and out in these different ways. And that's what the song became. And then initially I'd, I'd written it for felicity but then it just became a bit broader where i started thinking about people and like how how do you do that yeah everyone does it you can fall in love again you really can <laughs> <laughs> even when you think you can't you can yeah um, that's very true and you could also fall in love with different collaborators as you have on this album just to, to continue that as you have with Kevin Bennett who's on here and Jen Myers and I'm I'm wondering because the songs on the album all feel like like it feels like the perfect number and the perfect collection of songs <laughs> um like they all belong together were there any that you discarded or did you actually feel like once you had this set of songs that like, this is it this is the album uh I did have a, a lot of songs for the album uh in, in the past you know sometimes I'd sort of it, in it uh i'd have you know 12 13 15 songs i was like i've got 15 to choose 11 from and stuff that i'm happy with this album i had um 26 27 songs that i was sort of um looking at mm -hmm. and uh you know some of them probably should have ended up on the cutting room floor but um there there was a lot more so it was just it was definitely during that period and some of those things started to cross over some of the 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 tesco west stuff that mightn't have suited that was a bit too gentle or a bit too this i started looking at maybe that could work for for um a solo record and then a part of having a, a quite a few songs there was through where i wrote clear like a bell Mm -hmm. uh four was through the song club I and mean, the same song club that felicity and josh released song club um from through sam hawksley uh who invited me to be part of the songwriting club and it was like you you turn around a song in a week and mm -hmm. so then <laughs> that was pretty <clears throat> pardon me um i got i think i got 10 or 11 weeks which I was happy with. And then I found out there was something like bloody Cunningham, you know, he was going on for like, you know, centuries. He'd been, and I was like, what? He'd been going for like 48 weeks or something. And it was just crazy. Um, I think after about 11 weeks, I started, uh, I started looking back through my phone for old ideas and stuff as well. And kind of go, you know, it was like, that's a pretty good idea i've got this melody and i felt like i was cheating it was just like this naughty you know it's like i can't tell anyone that i'm I, I don't know if the rules were that strict but um in song club i um i started going through my old ideas uh and uh and then i was out after 10 or 11 weeks but i got i think maybe two or three songs from the album from that and clear like a bell one of the singles that end up doing with felicity and and kevin uh was from that period and i i think i wrote that in a couple of hours right. and so it was that that thing i was talking about where where you at at that moment when you're really open creatively and you just those things are coming in kind of quick and fast and some of those ideas are um uh, some oddly some of the best things that you can have rather than things you pour over for years i mean you're right you you'd understand this um sometimes those instinctive first ideas mm. end up being some of the best things and it's quite odd um you doubt yourself creatively but that's um that's what can happen anyway so um uh i had a lot of songs probably through song club as well and maybe a lot to, a lot to say uh they're you know banging on like if you ask my family i mean they're probably outside that door now just kind of going he's still in there banging on about himself <laughs> you're allowed to we're talking about your work jeremy so the, just in, and the, on the question of the songs that come out quickly i think it's when you get out of your own way is where that happens and so that and so you if you if you have a if you're practiced at getting out of your own way then you can recognize that feeling that happens when something's coming through like that and as long as you don't get back into your own way absolutely 
Yeah, no, I mean, like, I, I was in a, a good enough place to be writing about personal things, writing about things that that meant something to me, but then creating characters that were interesting enough for people to to listen to. You know, if you make it just about yourself and what you're feeling, people are going to get bored pretty quick because no one knows what, what it's like inside there. So, I mean, that's really the way that I write. It'll be something in in me but it'll it'll eventually have to cross over with a character that i'm creating you know uh that makes it interesting enough for people to listen to because if it's all just about you it's just an ego you know thing or whatever and people are i mean they're just not that interested um so you've got to create something that that people universally might be a bit more interested in but it's got to have something in you in it to be able to yeah cut through and that that's really the basis of of a lot of my writing is that in all different um aspects is um there's always going to be some sort of emotion you felt or um or are feeling very strongly but you've you've got to take it outside of just about yourself <laughs> well so that whole thing of my yeah the universe the specific is universal but it's i think the intention has to be there to make it so as well yeah absolutely yeah so um, as I've mentioned, you, uh, you've you mentioned Kevin Bennett um, collaborating with you on this album. Now, I've heard Lynn Botel talking about how she you know, she might have a song that, that was not working and, or she felt it wasn't working and she'd take it to KB and he's like some kind of magician. Was that how you worked with him as a songwriter or did you actually work together from the start of the songs? Uh, there's a couple of different answers to that, but that's very, again, very astute by someone who knows uh, Kevin very well. He... he he is a bit of the you know song whisperer in many ways and a very true friend if he respects you uh in in that way creatively like you um it's a fabulous thing and 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 kb has become a you know a dear friend and and a and a dear mentor and a dear uncle and brother and all of those many things um to me and uh so there's a couple of different ways that i worked with kevin one of the songs that's on the record was a song that we did as a live co-write in front of 30 people up at the dag singer songwriter and the annual singer songwriter uh, workshop um outside tamworth that uh a bunch of us do uh and take people out on the farm and no reception and we just live and breathe songwriting for four or five days and uh the the mentors the tutors have to write you know to sort of three songs we're writing three songs a day then performing at night and then helping people with playing during the day or melodies or harmonies or whatever and uh nothing but the blues on the record was a song that Kevin and I had to do as a live co-write. So it's like, there's a bottle of wine. Everyone sits down and watches you in this forum, you know, sort of up on stage. And it's like, off you go. And uh, I've done a couple of those. I did one with Shane uh, uh, and one with Kevin. And uh, it, it sounds like about the most terrifying thing to most people that you could possibly do. And it, but it's quite funny is because no one is allowed to say anything. So you'll be there sort of writing, oh, I'm writing ghosts. What can, oh, there's, I can't think of anything that goes with, you know, you're banging away over two and a half hours and we've got to finish this in half an hour. Ghost, oh, nothing rhymes with ghost. We can't do it. And everyone's trying to, um, uh, everyone's, wanting to yell out <laughs> i've got a hundred things i can help you with yeah, yeah, right. and uh and you're sitting there and uh it's a fabulous it's a fabulous process I, I never thought i'd be able to get through something like that especially with someone like kevin who I grew up you know watching in bands and 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 loving as a as a um a singer songwriter and uh, we got nothing but the blues, which is one of my favourite songs on the on the album. Um, so yeah, he might be a wizard, song wizard. Um, <laughs> but I'm in there, you know. I'm in there as a little Harry Potter trying to do my own thing. Um, at the same time. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, Gomeroy, another very uh, important song to me on on the album, 
was uh, in that way, uh, I really uh, thank uh, KB for steering me in the right way with that, where I'd gone down um, a tricky path about um, a First Nations boy and what had happened to him and a story that I'd, I'd, I'd heard about. And I just got in this tangle of not feeling confident about saying what I, I could as a privileged white guy living on the coast in Australia or whatever. And I just sort of lost my nerve a bit maybe. And um, I've been working with Kevin with many different things there. And and he had to listen to the song. He's like, it's a great idea, great melody, movement, chords. You're probably going down the wrong track here, mate. And just, you know cut to the chase and uh leave it with me but there's something there let's um let's just let me have a think about it he stayed up till 3 a.m and sort of came back with um this idea of it becoming this sort of uh forbidden and doomed love story between a first nations boy and and i sing the song as a as a young uh uh a young girl from a country town in australia who's in love with the first nations boy and they're in trouble with their relationship in the hometown and judgment from people around and that became the song and it's become such an important song for me uh and that was that guidance i guess that you're referring to with mm -hmm. with kevin and another collaborator is Jen Myers, who appears on the last three tracks and in, on the very last track she plays cello. Now, you are in a band with Jen called The Rough and Tumble, which has eight members, I think. So <laughs> it's so it crazy. lots of different environments for you as a musician and performer. Where it's, it's you know, you as a solo artist, you in this big band. Um, so when did you start working with Jen? Uh, Jen, I, I remember... The first time I met Jen was at Tamworth at the festival and I was playing, I think, at the Tamworth Hotel and she was walking around with a whiteboard uh, like this. <laughs> I can't speak. I've got bronchitis. No. I'm, I, you know, and I was just like, who is this fruitcake? And she was quite striking and, uh, and, a few people had said to me a few things about Jen is like, she's incredible. You got to check her out, whatever. And so we met, but it was like, we were a little bit standoffish. She was like, I've heard a lot about you and oh, I've heard about it. So we we're sort of like, <laughs> you know, being a bit cagey with each other. And, and if uh, she had bronchitis, she obviously couldn't sing that amazing voice she has. Absolutely. And there's no bullshit. She was writing stuff down and I was like, this who is this fruitcake uh and uh and so i still didn't speak to her or hear her sing i think that year <laughs> and then of course i went away from there but we you know we, there was some sort of click and um i went away went away and um really looked at 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 jen's music and it was just like good lord wow okay um i don't think she went away and looked at my music and said good lord she might have said that you know it's, it's okay i don't know what she thought but anyway we we hooked up and um uh i i can't quite remember what it was but we when we started communicating we realized that there was this entire other world outside of singer songwriter land and being in in, in country music or you know um uh in australia that was like what about this what about billy holiday what about alabama shakes what about the black crows what about you know there's all this sort of like heavier like darker stuff and really broad and jazz i grew up with you know hearing a lot of jazz through my my uh, father my parents and stuff like that and jen was really knowledgeable about that sort of stuff and was like wow okay there's all this and so again i just started it just blew my brain open and I just started writing stuff for for her before right. I even thought about the band or what we should do or whatever. I just thought, who you know, who can sing the shit out of stuff like Chris Robinson from the Black Crows? She can do it. And I I wrote uh this idea for a song that ended up being on on our record that we have out. And 
this has got to be this sort of sexy southern rock soul thing. I'll do. Let's do it as a duet, whatever. And I sort of sent her this thing, and she sent back her. She just went, I love it you know sent back something it was just all on the phone and she sang this thing and i was just sitting there with my mouth open just going oh my god my you know so that's where you that instinct is so true sometimes and from that it was like when can you come down she came down to my house here and through all we wrote five six songs for the record in a weekend and they were like on fire uh for that style of stuff southern rock stones ish soul Mm -hmm. um um, uh that whole memphis you know sort of thing and and southern rock thing all that stuff colliding in there and we're still working together and still writing for our our next album i'm I'm coming up to to uh to caloundra music festival next weekend to play with the band with her yeah and you have a couple of shows of your own coming up. Uh, I think one in Sydney, one in Bulleye. Yeah, I have a show with uh, Kevin Welsh, who um, you would know, uh, Kevin, you know, what a fabulous California-born, uh, incredible songwriter, uh, Americana king, uh, Kevin Welsh. And uh, I, again, through Kevin Bennett, I, I've I've met, uh, you know, these fabulous people and we've had a a couple of great gigs with the flood and kevin welsh and we really hit it off and he's doing a round of shows and i thought that'd be a a great pairing to come and do some songs uh from the new album uh and play with him so that's uh october the 12th at the camelot lounge and then a show with lynn botel and liam kennedy clark down in in my hometown down here uh uh, november 19th yeah well it sounds like uh you still have a very rich musical life jeremy it's been it's i'm I'm sure there's i could have you talking for another couple of hours i should let you go so you can preserve (laughs) your own voice since i've been hearing about jen losing hers um but yeah (laughs) It's a beautiful album, guys. It's very, um, it's very hard. It, it, well, this is going to sound twee. It does tend to haunt one um, a little bit. I think my, when you've listened to it a few times, or when I listened to it a few times, it was hanging around, and I was just, I would hear these elements of it. I think, oh, it's that album. So it's like a self fulfilling prophecy that way. Thank you. That that's uh, I'll take that as a compliment, whether you mean it or not. Oh, I do gonna, mean it as a compliment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run away with that, uh, but. Yeah, particularly with the friends that that I've made um, uh, that album with, and who who passed through that grief as well. A lot of them have contacted me and and sort of said the same thing. It's not like I wrote it for that, but there's something there that needed to be said, and and all of us to be involved. And I, I'm just so blessed to have that kind of moment in my life. Really, I guess, yeah. Well, and you've given it to the rest of us. So thank you for that album and whatever you come up with next. Jeremy Edwards, it was great to talk to you. Lovely to talk to you too. Thank you so much.